here. Exactly. Sorry. I'm no, excited. go ahead. I'm still, I'm still actually reading uh, your caregiver's book. So I'm excited to hear more about your next book because um, as sisters, we're in a very similar place. Um, we are. We both uh, lost our parents. Yes, our, and particularly our mommies. So it's like yes, our mommies. This is that uh, that part of the the sisterhood or a club that nobody wants mm -hmm. to be in, but you know, we yeah. uh, have the kindred spirits because we are. So yeah. I want to uh, first of all thank everybody who has joined. This is a new, a unique uh, setting for for me and for us to do. A virtual launch. I, I had to look up even like, what are we? What am I supposed to do differently? Because the last time it was in person and you know, li a library full of, of of people, and so online here we are. And um, so the first thing, again, I want to thank everyone who is is logged in uh, during the quarantine time to this to watch us, and I. Um, want we are recording as well so um i wanted to do two options i'm doing facebook live on one side and i'm doing zoom on the other so that uh i know with zoom there can be more interaction but if you're on facebook live you can still type in comments and things of that nature and we can uh we can see those as well embracing your new normal i guess uh first i guess the synopsis of this book why embracing your new normal as i as i said uh, a moment ago this is that part of life that nobody wants to to you know we don't run towards uh grief and death as many of you know i'm that keep it 100 keep it real kind of chick <laughs> and so like I, i'll share it with uh one of my good friends that you know we they we can't avoid death uh, we have and we have no we don't have much we don't have much control over death you know we don't want to uh deal with premature death but it it does happen and so with embracing your new normal this is to some degree a the sequel if you will to from carefree to caregiver uh from carefree to caregiver leona and i talked about this was it last night or this morning but from carefree to caregiver, you know, you are, we, we are um, able to, we were the caregiver, we were caring for someone, but uh, with this, uh, with, well, from, as in, in a caregiver space, you know, you're, you're trying to help someone stay alive and live and do what, the, and you're in that mode and, um, now, ultimately, at some point, I'll say it like this, at some point, the end does come. We don't know when, we don't know how long, but it does come. And so this to that degree, this book, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm responding to someone who's asking, am I, am I live? <laughs> but this is that result of, now I call it the sequel. Initially, I was actually going to title of this book and when I was writing the first several passages I was calling this the aftermath because mm -hmm. like <laughs> the aftermath of being the caregiver and after they are the person that you were caring for is no longer with us you know now have to deal with life um from because they're no longer here and the aftermath sounded harsh to some degree but it it real talk is traumatic like this don't it feel is. good <laughs> this is like you know all of and uh, this is crap all of us have lost somebody and so it's not about a a pity situation or somebody you know like woe is me but it's really just dealing with real life and your emotions and the changes that you go through and the the ups and downs that we go through after losing someone, the roller coaster of emotions, the days when I don't feel like getting out of bed, but I still got to go to work and pay these daggone bills, you know, mm. or the days when you just want to put the covers over your head. And then the days where you feel like you're on cloud nine and you can do all of this and, you know, I'm a, I'm a make, I'm a rock it out. And then like 
one little thing can, uh, you may just see one thing or hear one word and it, um, it pumps your brakes. You know, it's a reminder of the person who's no longer here and it's challenging. And so with, that's how I got here, that, that this, I often say that my mom, for example, taught me so much, but the one thing that she never taught me is how to live without her. You know what I'm saying? Does anybody feel me on that? You know, you, we have somebody in our life who teaches us everything, but the one thing that, you know, and nobody really wants to teach somebody uh, or, well, I'll say it like this. Sometimes they try to teach you and try to help you to be, to be able to be prepared beyond um, their life. But sometimes we don't want to receive it. And sometimes we don't want to hear it. And we're like, don't talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to hear you. But, you know, here we are. And um, so with writing this book, I also had to realize that it was therapeutic, but it was also to help somebody else. I remember when my grandmother passed away. And, and we, one reason I did this today is because today would have been my grandmother's 99th birthday, May the 3rd. Yeah, uh, would have been her birthday. And I remember that my mom cared for my grandmother. And uh, when my mom transitioned, when my grandmother transitioned, my mom wasn't sure, you know, she went through the, what you call them, caregiver withdrawals in terms of really tr being able to, to live um, without grandma. And so we, we deal with those kinds of, of things, you know, going through, okay, I, I'm part of my routine was this when I was caring for someone, but now that they're no longer here, how do I fill my life and my time uh, and that space with no longer going to a facility, no longer having to prepare meals, no longer having to do this? No, so that's where, that's how we got here, how I got here at least. And then um, what does it mean to embrace your new normal? <laughs> that or leon oh. you supposed to ask me that but never mind i'm here <laughs> i do i guess do. i'm on a roll but you know like what does it mean to embrace your new normal do you ever embrace it someone asked me that when i first made the announcement about the book when i shifted the title like what does it mean to embrace your new normal well to me embracing your new normal is really about embracing change simply put it's about embracing change it's about embracing the change I ain't never asked for. It's about like embracing your new, your, your new normal can encompass a number of things. It can encompass a new normal of after the loved one, after someone passes away. It's also embracing a new normal. For example, we've got, got a lot of people who have been furloughed lately and who've been laid off from jobs. That's the new normal. That happened to me last year, <laughs> ironically. Yes. So, uh, yes. So how do you get past any feelings of guilt that may come with embracing that new normal? I would say getting the way that I got past the feelings of guilt that comes with, with um, that is realizing that in her heart of hearts, in my mom's heart of hearts, for example, she would have never wanted me to wallow and to, you know, I still miss her. I grieve. Absolutely. My grandmother still, she died in 2001, but I still miss my grandmother. But it, for, but I also know that she wanted me to live. Both of them, they trained me for this. You know what I'm saying? They, they prepared me for this, even when I didn't realize that they were preparing me. And so I think that all of us, particularly if it's the death of a parent, um, no matter what age or how long we had them in our lives, Amen. because some I know have had their parents longer than others or shorter times um, than others. I have a, a dear cousin who lost her mom when she was a teenager. But at the same token, I really believe that the time, whatever time we had with our loved one, they were also 
uh, preparing us to some degree and that they would never want us to, they wouldn't want our life to end be on earth because theirs did. They're no longer on earth, but we are still here. And because we are still here, I believe that they would still want us to carry on and to be productive. And, you know, after you sigh and take that deep breath and say, okay, how am I going to keep living? Mm. That, that was my question. Like, really, my best friend was in the room with me and my cousins when my mother took her last breath and transition. And after she took that last breath, I let out a scream that I don't recall ever letting out before. But because the question came to my mind, okay, how am I going to get up through this? How am I going to pick myself up from this? How am I going to, you know, how am I going to keep living? How am I going to breathe even through this? But you have to learn how to do it. And I believe that anybody who really loved us would have wanted us to learn how to do it. Right. And that's a hard lesson. <laughs> God knows it's not easy. Right. So I want to also point out for our guest that you can use the group chat function. It's to your right or yeah, to your actual right, where um, Tara will see all of your questions if you have any questions at this point. And she's at, you know, happy, of course, to entertain those. Thank you. As we continue to talk about And I'm monitoring what it's like. live questions. Yes, so you have some. And I see my good lineup. friend, Stephanie Arnold, thank you, is on Facebook Live and has um, so graciously posted the link to the Amazon link uh, in that. Oh, for purchase. Yes, for purchase. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we drag it into our group chat? I tried to open up. Let me see if I can open up. I'll drag yes. it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It is available on Amazon, booksamillion.com, walmart.com, terralinecampbell.com. And I would say another thing, <laughs> You know, it's funny how God does things and God has, um, oh, by the way, if you're on Facebook, if you don't mind, please share, share the live feed on your own page. I would, I would greatly appreciate that. It's funny how God does, has plans beyond what we have. Taralene's plan with the, in, in doing this launch and release um, on April 28th was to release the book two weeks before, shortly before Mother's Day. Um, for kind of obvious reasons. Well, not maybe obvious to everyone, but there uh, for some, um, for a large part of our population, Mother's Day is not as um, as po as positive and it's, not, it's no longer a day that we look forward to. In some cases, one of the things I write about in the book, in some cases, Mother's Day, I know, I know people who, for whom Mother's Day is just extremely challenging, extremely difficult, and it's a day that people uh, re approach with anxiety. And um, oh, um, Evangelist Pam uh, Parson, it is uh, 1699 on Amazon. If you want a signed copy, you can get it from me on my website, terralinecampbell.com. Um, but Mother's Day, you know, for, for many is a, is a difficult time. So I purposely wanted to release it around this time. But now here we are with this pandemic in our nation and in our world and you've got a whole nother group of people who have become caregivers at this point and then you've got a whole nother segment of the population who have unfortunately lost someone and lost a loved one and so i believe i believe that god in his infinite wisdom because i certainly didn't know but that we knew that this book would Sorry. also be a help and a support for others who are now faced with life, uh, with going on with their life without somebody else that they love. So, yeah. I'll take a break there for a second and see if there are any questions, any comments. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Nisi, for posting. Thank you, guys. Yes.
Oh, yes, Keisha. Yes. I, I remember our conversation about you dreading Mother's Day. And and I thought, I, I remember ca I carried that conversation and I thought about you um, as I was finalizing edits. And I'll say to, to, to those, because Mother's Day is next week, one of, the light, one of the lessons that me and one of my girlfriends, my good girlfriend, Lisa Turner, uh, our moms passed within five days of each other. And um, so we were both supporting each other through the caregiving piece. And then, you know, our moms passed and um, it was hard, but of course to, but we were supporting each other as best we could through the process. And now what we have done is on Mother's Day, we call it Daughter's Day. And so for the last two years, what Lisa and I have done is we would go to brunch or, or something like that together. And we would use that day to celebrate our mommies. That's what we have done. Uh, so we were actually just talking about this the other day, like, okay, so what are we going to do? Um, because we can't go, we obviously can't go to brunch next Sunday. Um, but, you know, thinking, well, well how are we going to handle next Sunday? But I just encourage you, if you are dreading next week, to mm -hmm. think about, okay, how can I, what can I do? to uh, fill that day with some level of positivity. I am, I'm, I'm just, I'm a glass half full type of chick. And so, you know, pain is not that pain does not reside here. And it's not that I'm putting on a facade that is not real. I just, um, I've made up my mind to work through it and to not allow it to paralyze me if that makes sense and so do in doing so i believe that we have to be as intentional in our plans as possible so that we can make those days um more bearable yeah right. more bearable it doesn't mean it's not gonna be painful but you need to make it bearable go ahead leona can you speak to um the importance of not self-isolating during that time I mean, sure. really throughout, honestly. Okay. Not, the question is how to speak, how to, to not self-isolate or not to self-isolate. I would say with that, um, realizing that the scripture in Ecclesiastes, I, be, I believe it is, that two are better than one. And mm. uh, a, a three, you know, and it talks about because when one is cold, how are you going to be warm? And how, if, if you by yourself, you know, this, you know, but that a triple braided cord cannot easily be broken. And so I believe that we all have to get us at least one person. I believe, this is just my personal truth. I believe that God will give each of us, he may not give us like a whole chorus of people. But I do believe that God will give you at least one person who will understand where you're coming from and who you can call on the phone and you can vent, you can cry, you can scream, and they won't judge you when you wipe your eyes. And they won't continue to bring it up, you know, three months ago. Well, you know, they, I believe that God gives us at least one. I really believe he gives us two or three. <laughs> but, but, you right. know, minimally, we're going to get one. And so I think that it is also very important not to self-isolate completely because if we do and when we do, we, are, we become prey more easily for the devil. You know, my grandmother used to say an idle mind is a devil's workshop. And how many oh, other grandma. people's grandmother and mother used to say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, back then I'd be like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. But I found that to be true, you know, that if it's just you having a moment, you need to have somebody that you can talk to and say, listen, I'm having a moment, send one up for me. Mm -hmm. Send one up for me. And I think that if we are able to do that, um, it will help a lot. And that, like, that they get what you mean. You don't have to go into all kinds of details. You don't need to give them a dissertation of what that moment right. is, but they can be like, got you, and I'm on it. It could be somebody that you can text, that you can say, I'm, look, send one up right now for me. 
and that they can do that for you. Um, understanding that self-isolating, my experience is, you know, we all need time and space where we can take a break from people and things. We need that. But you also need to be able to um, have, be healthy in doing it. That's, I think that's very important that we're, we're healthy as we um, take our, our respites and our times away. I have a, a, a squad I call, we call each other that if it's been a few days, some of them are on here on, on Facebook and on Zoom right now, that if it's been a few days, we haven't heard from each other. There's one that'll call, <laughs> I ain't gonna name her, but she over there with a little black dog um, <laughs> in Uppity Marlboro. And she'll call like, hey, where you been? And, but you know, and that's the good thing is, is that we can, we can keep each other um, accountable and going. I have a question here on Facebook. Um, let me go back to that from Melissa, I believe it is, was asking, so how do you deal with the moments when you're stuck? Um, stuck in the moment of death and can't move past the feelings of loss even years later. I would say number one, realize that there's not a timetable. Um, right. You know, people used to think, oh, it's been, you know, X number of years, you need to be over it. But I have mm -hmm. realized that and one of my one of my friends who is a, a grief recovery specialist has helped with the to realize that no, to no longer grieve really means that you no longer like grief is really just love. It's really a, if I ain't love you, if, if I ain't, if I ain't, I wouldn't miss you if I ain't love you, if I ain't care. Like real talk. Yeah, that's real. Real talk. <laughs> Think about it. It's the very people real. who have left your life that you ain't cared two bits about. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, you right. know, because I'm not the tears will come. But the people that I miss. It's because I had an affinity towards them. It's because we had a, some type of good relationship. So mm -hmm. if I, you know, when you're grieving, it's good, you're, you're basically missing them. You're missing what was, you're missing the loss. So there's not a timetable on it. I think that dealing with the moments when you do feel stuck, it's, it's real practical stuff. It's not like real mystical necessarily. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, you know, my pastor teaches, has taught us that Jesus was in the grave, you know, the, but he got up on the third day. So by the th three days, you could be down and out. But by the third day, if Jesus got up, we got to be able to get up. I mean, it's really that simple. And so I keep that in my head. And so when I'm in those like spaces that are really, really down, I have to sometimes, I really do. I talk to myself. I admit it. And uh, Tara, now it's been a couple of years. You, I mean, a couple of days. You got to you gotta come up out of this. And I have to say sometimes, baby steps. Call right. somebody else today. Baby steps. Um, you know, do something that you enjoy today to help lift your mood. Baby steps. Put on, my best friend used to drag, used to mess with me about wearing black all the time. So, you know, maybe a baby step. Put on something purple because that's my favorite color, you know, or <laughs> just do something right. that makes me, that, but that'll help, it, that, that can gradually start to lift you um, beyond where, where you are. I think that's, a, that's one of the ways to um, come out of it. And, Self and to think about how can, how can I do something that brings my loved one honor, something that um, helps me to have a positive reflection on them as opposed to something that's going to just have me, you know, tears are good, but, I, but like, how can I do something that, that honors them and that will be positive? For me, writing a caregiver book was one of those things. It was, it was, that was part of, partially to honor Cindy. Yeah, I hope that helped. Cindy Moe's daughter. Yep, Cindy Moe's daughter. Yep. That was my mom's nickname. Her last name used to be Moses. Her maiden name was Moses. I love, I really did love that. You know, I was, I was reading. <laughs> I, I need, I need to get it signed though. You know, I bought it on Amazon. Oh, you still haven't gotten your <laughs> signed. Okay. Yeah, I got you. can you believe it? That's I got okay. You. Whenever you come, what I see, what I see, I got you. 
<laughs> uh, I think what you said around affirmations, mm -hmm. um, talking nicely to yourself and doing things that bring you joy and honor uh, to your loved one, um, definitely helpful. Um, we, we know that powerful. this is right, right. And we, we know that the process is not finite. Um, so I, I stand in agreement with you on that. Yeah. Um, certainly, uh, there are days, uh, really, I, I think of my mother regularly. Yeah. Um, she's, she's with me. Absolutely. <laughs> she, she is with me. As a matter of fact, the older I get, the more of her attitude I, I recognize in myself. Girl, I think about how <laughs> I say stuff that I, now I realize, like, oh my, sometimes it shakes me. I'm like, oh my right. God, I sound like my mother. Oh my God. Now, right. I would say, you know, I, many of you know I love hats. Mm. And I developed, years ago, I didn't like wearing hats because I didn't want it to mess up my hair. <laughs> You know, typical black women stuff, you know, mm -hmm, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I, I went to a tea in Delaware and that required hats, my first one. And then I was, I was gone after that. I was like, I love this. I love hats. But my mom wore hats all the time and like fashionable hats. Mm -hmm. And I would buy her hats every, I had every Easter and every Mother's Day. And so actually the first tea that I went to I went and got one of the blue and white hats that I had bought her. <laughs> and, and, you know, so it's it's just, I realized that I've become to some, you know, with my own twist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah. have to have our own little stuff onto it. But um, I've become, for real, a bit of, of her. And right. it's, it's both gratifying and a little scary at times. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Let yeah. me read um, or just share a bit of like a couple of passages from the book. I'm not going to read, of course, much, an entire one, the whole thing, because you've got to buy the book. Thank but you. Passage one is called One More Day. Should hmm. I start with that one? No, I'm going to start with this one. It's called Uncertainty. This one, because of coronavirus, y'all, my own shipment is going to get here this week. It hasn't come. But as soon as I get mine, those are ordered directly from me with, for the signed copies, you will have them. This is called uncertainty. Walking through a new normal means that we will be confronted with uncertainty. There will be uncertain times and days. There will be instances wherein you second guess yourself and are trying to find direction. There will be times when you find yourself struggling to restore your life's peace and days when you're working to rediscover your passion and your purpose. These are normal aspects of, grief, of the grieving process that can occur when the realization hits you that the person who gave you life is no longer on this earth. What I've come to learn while navigating this new normal is that I must pray even more. I have to seek peace and pursue it. Some people will be left by the wayside, but not necessarily because they haven't done, they've not necessarily because they've done anything wrong or I've done something wrong. Simply put, the new normal may not include everybody. Therefore, I'm learning not to force that which does not fit because everything cannot come into this new normal that I am embracing. Truth is there will be nights when you cry yourself to sleep because the future seems uncertain. I did. There will be nights when you go to sleep with questions and wake up the next morning with those same questions on your mind. I have done that too. Through those days and nights, my affirmation is simple. Although I may not have the answers, I serve a God who does. And he has never left me hanging. The fact that I am in a covenant relationship with a certain and steady God who has seen me through the most uncertain and unpredictable days is enough to keep me during this season of my life. And rest assured, he will see you through to uncertainty. That's one of the passages. Wow. Any, anything Thank in the chat? Thank you for sharing really? that with us. Hmm? Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm excited. 
certainly because you know we, we are all in our new normal and it, it's not like your new normal uh stops <laughs> i mean it doesn't. Th this is it right so yeah. um what, what i like about what you've done in writing um both of these books is it's still very relevant you know i mean i can still look at your first book and find comfort in passages that even though I'm past that stage um, developmentally, there are certain, there are, there are passages that still speak to some of the questions that I still struggle with, uh, even though it's somewhat of a non-issue, it's right. not. Because I still have friends who also are going through this and are newly members of this unfortunate and dreadful club, to be frank. Yeah, it, so, I mean. And, and even though I know that this is all very biblically based, I think that you can be of a different denomination and still find value because the word is still the word. Absolutely. Um, so I, I appreciate that about uh, your very no nonsense approach. Um, <laughs> I do. I mean, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is no you. nonsense approaches. You know, <laughs> um, I, I have some friends that we say we're an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like caviar. Like everybody, right. everybody can't right. take it. But yeah, uh, that you know, true. that was part of of even my mom and my grandmother. They were both not no nonsense women. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the the 21st century chip off that block <laughs> of the Scott Scott Moses women. Mm -hmm, um, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I agree. I do think I wrote it as a devotional book. Mm -hmm. Um, again, just like from carefree to caregiver yeah. it is a devotional format. And the reason for that, I don't, I don't like, I guess I wrote it like that again, because you, um, you really, we feel what we feel, but at the end of the day, we cannot stay there if we're going to move on with our life. Yeah, Melissa, right. we're not here for everybody, girl. <laughs> and, and, you know, and so mm -hmm. it's like with the devotional part, the goal is always to, at, at the end of whatever I've, I've written about and what I'm feeling, my goal is always to uplift and leave the reader, you as the readers, in a better mental and spiritual space uh, with that passage that you read that particular day. Right. And so from with carefree to caregiver, you know, thank God and to God be the glory. The feedback that I got was awesome in stating that that mission was accomplished. And so hopefully with this book, um, the mission will also be accomplished in helping those who are, are you know, still dealing with the day to day task of living beyond living beyond the death of someone else mm -hmm. and also tony I, I thank you for that that i i can't overlook that there are brothers who also glean he said from my writings and Amen. thank you for that to god be the glory i'm i'm really glad that what i have shared isn't is is not just you know, for women, as a, of course, as a woman, I speak to women in a lot of um, platforms, but I'm glad that I'm reaching the men and the brothers as well. I realize that brothers do handle grief and loss differently. Uh, one of my best friends just lost his mother two weeks ago, and I realized that, it, you know, it's handled, we, we deal, women deal with it differently, but um, loss is loss nevertheless and you know there's a passage in the book called what's next mm. that one was for me this is i wrote this one shortly after my mom's funeral so just a tip a tip from this one the funeral is over <laughs> the phone has stopped ringing that's one of the things that's really difficult mm -hmm. is after someone passes away everybody and their brother and sister is coming to you, calling you texting you, you know, and all that kind of thing. And, and I get it. Everybody means well, and it's so much, so greatly appreciated. But after the funeral's over, it's almost like, you know, crickets, as they say, or dead silence. You don't hear as much. And it's not, I don't think from a ne negligent space. Um, people just move on. And 
people, the, someone else is probably passing, someone else's family. So it's, you, they have to move on and try to show support. But here you can be, like one of the things that I do personally is I tend to send cards like a good two, three weeks to, to a month after someone after the funeral many of y'all know that like have gotten those from me i do it after on purpose because i realize that after the funeral's over the meal that nobody's offering you to bring you food to your house <laughs> um and okay. then, you know we have all true food the week of the funeral and then mm -hmm. it's like oh now what what am i supposed to do so that's here we are the visits have ended and hardly anyone is around. Me, I'm an only child. Many of y'all know that as well. So I'm, they were here when I needed them and I thank God. They've now returned to the normalcy of their lives. Meanwhile, what I once called normal is no more and I still need them. I'm left to face what is commonly known as the new normal. Not only must I face it, but I must ultimately accept and embrace it if I expect to really live again. That's just paragraph one of the chapter called What's Next. You know, we've all dealt with that and grappled with it. Like, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do yep. now? Yep. Life is not the same, but we have to figure it out. Um, one of my vacation mates, uh, I took a vacation, a much needed vacation in December uh, and went to on a cruise. And, and my roommate from that cruise is on, on here, Devon. I'm going to share, Devon, I used to go out in the morning on, the, on our balcony and write. <laughs> this is one of the passages that I wrote while I was on the balcony one morning. This is called One More Day. I'm writing this passage while sailing the Caribbean and gazing out into the Atlantic Ocean from the balcony of my cabin. My view is contradictory. It's both extraordinary and uneventful. The crisp, clear, clear blue sky, along with the beautiful blue water of the ocean is breathtaking. And there is nothing else in sight besides the sun. The waves ripple as the ship sails through the water. As I'm sitting on my balcony, something occurred to me. The fact that I can see nothing else in the distance leads to uncertainty and speculation. And I experience a flurry of emotions that brings me to tears. This is a visual of my life in this new normal. It's uncertain. While I don't know what else is out there, I am confident that something is. Then I begun, begin to see faraway objects, although I'm unable to distinguish what they are. Likewise, God has more out there for me in this life. And while I cannot see what it is right now, I know that I must continue to trust him. That's just a couple of um, paragraphs from that particular um, chapter called One More Day. Let me see. Oh, I'm going to read this other part to that passage. As I sit on the deck of this mammoth 13 story ship, I realize that I've enjoyed my time here, but tomorrow is the day that I must get off this boat and move on. Although we may not feel ready, it is time to disembark from the boat. Remember that, Davon? We, were, we weren't ready, but we, it's time to disembark from the boat and move on. Although we may not, um, yeah, I said that. And we've, but once we've got to disembark from the boat we were once on and cope with this new normal. The boat equals to part of our lifestyle. While we are unsure what is out there in the sea of life, we do know that God's got us. He's got a plan. Tomorrow is another day and we must move on. Through it all, he will give us peace and an assurance that will enable us to go forth one more day let me see i got a few comments i think in the chat and of course um just to for those who may not be familiar with my writings as a devotional each passage also ends with a scripture and a prayer i'm a lover of prayer so just to pray i think the book is valuable for a number of reasons <laughs> but nothing else allow me to pray over you as you go through your respective new normals. Again, it may be the loss of a job. It may not be the loss of a parent. It could be the loss of a, of a marriage. 
It could be you facing a new normal there. It could be the loss of a sibling. There is just so much death that is going on um, in this world right now. This may be a good book for you to share, to gift someone. Gift it to someone, um, you know, in time for Mother's Day who struggled with Mother's Day. Gift it to somebody who's had to go through the unfortunate situation of saying goodbye of over this last six weeks to someone without having the benefit of a funeral. Oh my God. Let's talk about, uh, you know, what we, what we have had to deal with compounded. Um, we've got people who've, who've said goodbye virtually and on, on social media uh, on Facebook Live because they could not have home going proper home going celebrations, and that just brings a whole nother type of emotions. And also, I would give advice to everyone um, as something I'm reading for from someone here in in the Zoom is, yeah, learn to forgive yourself, learn to give yourself grace with every day. There are, um, learn, be able to know when you're not, you're not going to, you don't have the capacity to deal with certain things. And also give yourself grace to change. My God, give yourself the grace to change. My sisters and brothers, one of the chapters in the book is about change. You know, it's very common for people to say you changed since such and such has happened. And, and sometimes that puts us in a defensive posture but I want you to not feel like you have to apologize, hear me, for changing. If you are, if, as we go through not only just death, but it's like what's going on in this country now today, you know, don't feel like you, we, we're all changing. We're all evolving. So do not feel as though you have to apologize for changing. Because when someone is now, left your life or something valuable has left your life my god we gotta change quite honestly change is required it's required i think carol wrote it carol um kelly wrote it's required for growth yeah we have to change I'm just so reading. I want to make sure Go ahead. <laughs> that, that we get a couple of these questions that we had prepared in advance. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you do <laughs> book discussions and webinars? Book discussions and webinars, yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, I will be happy to um, do book discussions and webinars. Just reach out to me and um, via my website, uh, via my uh, that's TaraLeanCampbell.com or via my um, social media platforms. I am on Instagram, Taraline R. Campbell on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, many of you are watching there, Taraline Campbell. And uh, yeah, we could we could work it out. Webinars. I've already gotten someone just this week since the book released has contacted me out of New York about um, doing something for a book club that her job is having. May, by the way, let me put a plug in here, is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so um, this particular person wants me, her job has a book club and has asked, has spoken to her, her company president about me doing a, a web chat with her uh, coworkers at, regarding um, this new normal and yeah, and ex this experience. So I will be, will be happy to do that. Yes. If anyone has any questions or comments, both in the, the Zoom, you can unmute yourself and, sh and do that. And or um, my Facebook Live crew, you can certainly, I'm, I'm seeing your comments here. Yeah, Beverly, it, we got to thank God for the memories, absolutely. I'm sorry, Brenda, Brenda, I was reading the B wrong. Um, but yeah, we have to thank God for the memories that we do have, yeah. Also, I want to speak to those, uh, this just came into my spirit, but to those who may be struggling with the fact that 
you're grieving, but your grief is different. Everybody's journey is, is unique, one, but your journey may be different because you may have had a strained relationship um, with the person who's no longer here, and you may not know how to feel. I, I experienced that with um, when, my, when the person who I knew to be my, who was my father, when I found out he had passed, I wasn't sure how to feel. Like, you know, because I, I never laid eyes on the man. So I, I felt an ache because it was my dad and because of the finality of him no longer being here. But at the same time, I was a little pissed, <laughs> quite honestly, you know, because I ain't never laid eyes on him. And so some people have um, a different type, you deal with a different type of, of grief because perhaps the relationships were strained. But again, don't let anyone box you in to how you feel. And as you reconcile your feelings, um, you know, yes, I'm in ministry and yes, I love the Lord. But I, at the same time, I believe in counseling. Let me say that again. I believe in counseling. I believe in therapy. I have done it myself. I'm not, I'm not um, ashamed to say that, that, you know, we have to, God will help us, but God uses people. And so just like he has, can help, he can use me on the spiritual side and, and other, you know, he can use a counselor, a therapist to help us on a practical, on a mental health, a clinical um, side. So please, if your 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 employer has EAP employee assistance programs or whatever that will allow you to see uh, seek therapy or if you even if you need to pay for it you know we pay to get our nails done we need we may need to invest that's the, invest in your mental health Let, yeah. Okay, just making sure I've covered the comments then answered any questions and again if any of you on zoom wanted to say anything you can i know i have chatty friends so <laughs> y'all can feel free I'm, I'm shocked that you're you're so quiet um okay I'll unmute myself, Tara Lynn. <laughs> hey, Heather. How are you? Good. <laughs> I'm one. I'm so happy that you're having this virtual um, book launch, and also to any time that I know someone that's going through a caregiver's um, going through a situation situation where they're a caregiver, I always direct them to your website. I said, let me tell you, you know, you also to need prayer and prayer mm -hmm. works. Um, as you know, yeah. I was a long distance caregiver for a while. And there's two things I wanted to touch on because okay. being a long distance caregiver, it was a very unique dynamic because I had to travel. I took care of my grandmother from 2000, the end of 2010 until she passed away in 2014. And right. during those years, I used to be in New York, literally from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come back mm -hmm. Sunday or if something happens. And that whole new normal thing, like the one thing I felt was two things I felt, I felt very guilty because when she passed away, it was like, this is over. And then I felt bad because I had to put her in a nursing home. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the best. And the only thing I'll never forget, I was having a struggle and my grandmother had a first cousin, cousin Goldie, she's like, 94 years old and I you know I would consult with her and I would cry and cousin Goldie said well sweetie are you doing the best that you can and I said yes she said can you sleep that night with your decision and I looked at her she said look your grandmother knows that knew that you did the best that you can and if she did not trust you she would have not left you in charge right right so and that's how I was able to deal with it but I felt so guilty because it was like this is over. Not necessarily, I did not want to take care of my grandmother. Anything my grandmother wanted, I've done. But it was just pulling at my heartstrings because you see a woman that traveled the world and all of a sudden she don't even remember her name. 
Right, right. And, and you know, Heather, like, because, you know, you we had talked a lot yeah. through that, that time, but the questions that you're, that you're, Ms. Goldie asked you, like, can you sleep at night? You know, and the answer is yes, then that helps a lot. And it does. It does. It really, yeah. really does because, you know, people usually have, you know, we as, and I'm going to say this, we as Black people, we have this thing of we take care of our elders. We don't pawn them off on other people. And I would get a lot of, I can't believe you put your grandmother in a nursing home. Why don't you just move her in? Why don't you do that? And I'm like, do you realize, like, what? Does that entail? This is a skill set beyond yeah. what I can do. If and I what a lot of people, in. I'm sorry, go ahead, Heather. I'm saying, and if I could, you think I wouldn't move her into my house and be able to get, you know, the best of care to have in care home. And then on top of that, being a caregiver, you also have to navigate the nuances of Medicare, Social yes. Security, and everything else. So this, yes. it's just not taking care of a person. You have to navigate negate the business aspect of it also too and i think that people also forget or don't realize that in some cases some people um uh, in our lives they need a level of medical care that we're not able to provide in the home um that was certainly the situation with my mother and so the decision was made for us um because of the level of care that she needed and uh while i wanted to i would have i toyed with moving her closer me moving i i toyed with moving home i toyed with taking fmla uh, and all of that but those things were simply not to be um unfortunately they were not to be and that that happens and so um my facebook live cut out that happens and we have to be able to most importantly you have to be able to be at peace with you and when you're taking when you took care of someone long distance it is not a bad thing that when they transition that you feel i think it's normal to feel a level of um relief if you will you know the running up and down the road the fatigue it's real <laughs> like seriously it's, it's it's very real. I ended up running up and down the road. Um, I ended up literally in the hospital from exhaustion because nobody did not know what was going on with me. And, you know, I was show, displaying symptoms of having the flu. Was it mono? Was it this? And he was like, well, what is going on with you? And I'm like, like look, I work a compact schedule. I take care of my grandmother. This is what I do. I have to be in New York. I got to make sure she's okay. You know, I would do pop-up visits at the nursing home because sometimes the first nurse at home I placed her in, they mistreated her. So, you know, I just wanted my presence known. And then on top of that, it was my father's, the funny thing, well, it's not the funny thing. The thing was on top of that, it was my father's mother I was taking care of. And my yeah. father lived third, like 25 minutes away and he didn't do anything. I don't think he was capable when he was alive at the time. I don't think he was capable of taking care of her. So now I'm taking care of my grandmother. I love my grandmother and there's not anything in the world I would do with her, but also I'm battling the resentment. Like, are you for real, sir? Like this, y'all, this a whole mother you have, you know, I live four hours away and you're right there. So I had to kind of come to the realization, like, you know what? I have to do what I have to do. I'm going to take care of my grandmother. I love her. And there's not, you know, my whole thing was I want her in her best years, as she would call it. I wanted her to be comfortable. Right. Right. <laughs> And that was my main, my main objective for her to be happy and to be comfortable. So if she would literally, like one day I called the nursing home, she was like, you know, I just want peppermint balls. And they were those big oversized five cent balls. I literally bought some peppermint balls, took the train, went to the nursing home and was like, here, grandma. And she's like, oh my goodness. And I was like, and you know, the nurses were fussing. She's not supposed to have candy. I said, look, I know for a fact. I don't know how much time she's going to have, <laughs> but whatever she wants, I'm going to do. So that's good. Thank you so much for sharing. 
How are you hey. doing? Oh, hey, Hey, Terlene, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I also want to quickly thank you for the resources and the um, information that you're providing. I'm currently about to transition into a caretaker role. Um, mm -hmm. Within the next few weeks, I have a very close friend who suffered a, <clears throat> a major stroke. Okay. Um, so they're currently in rehab now and they will be um, um, let's say released um, in a few weeks and they do not have a large family base so I elected to be one of the three caregivers because it was decided that they would they should be better off being at home um, to to provide some sort of care so it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know right, and so right. I'm just kind of just trying to get as much information as I can um, just assuming okay. already knowing just the physical um, responsibilities but also emotional responsibilities um, that come with that. So this is something that I've never had to experience before. So, mm -hmm. um, and I want to do the best that I can, but also make sure that my, you know, my personal, you know, mental health and, you know, my family and everything else is also um, not as impacted as it could be, you know, so right. I just want to make sure that I'm just, you know, getting them information. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, she must have known. So this is um, great information. Um, I will be um, getting the book. I just happened to see this on, on Facebook a couple of days ago. So I just wanted to thank you. Certainly. Uh, hi, so two things that come to mind for you. One, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that you get from Carefree to Caregiver mm -hmm. first. And on, on my website, I do a bundle. So um, my, my awesome publisher, shout out to Saran. Monet from Penn Legacy Publishing. She has taught me about bundling and, you know, it's funny, I'm in marketing, right? Many of y'all know that, but trying mm -hmm. to market and promote your own stuff, I don't know. It's like, mm, um, I have a no whole nother level of, of, of thought process about that. And, uh, you know, Leona and Nisi are uh, two of the people probably shaking their heads at me right now. Um, <laughs> but with I bundle so like from carefree to caregiver and mm -hmm. this book, the new normal. Um, I would recommend that. But the other thing, Hyacinth, for a stroke survivor, I definitely want you to read read up on working with someone who's had a stroke. Um, if and they're now you have to care for them. What I have found, and I've encountered um, this one with my mom, but also with others is just mentally they're in a different space mm, anyone who mm. has survived the stroke is in a different space mm. um so emotionally because and it can become um it can lead to a lot of anger mm, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. the just be mindful of that because what happens is they survive but what their body what their mind still wants mm -hmm. they still want to do their mm -hmm. body is limiting them yeah yeah and mm -hmm. so with that in mind it makes it very difficult and they will they they can start to lash out mm -hmm. um they mm -hmm. could you know yeah they could start to lash out they could um uh, i have I, I remember meeting someone just last january at a book signing for the caregiver book and she shared with me that she and her husband um, she was at her wit's end and she was, she had bought the book and how it shared how it blessed her because caring for him and caregiving is not just a parent, you know, that, um, and caring for her husband, he was a different person after the stroke and mm -hmm. he was, you know, a lot more irritable and, mm -hmm. you know, you feeling like you breaking your behind to, you know, mm -hmm. to support them and that they're not necessarily grateful. So that's just wow, something that, that you should yeah. mentally Mm -hmm. prepare mm -hmm. yourself for because I know you mm -hmm. and I know how much of a giver Hyacinth is mm -hmm. <laughs> and Thank so you. I don't want you to it, it can pop the balloon mm. okay um and yeah. so I'm, I'm only sharing that with you so that you're mentally prepared because I know you are such a giver and such a supporter and you know so I wouldn't want you to be like oh my god where did this come from <laughs> right 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 I appreciate that Tara and I really do thank no you Tara can I comment to yes. Hyacinth hey, Hyacinth but, oh, how yes, you yes. doing I'm good sweetie <laughs> Just to Only also, <laughs> <laughs> um, just you are going to take care of a friend, and that is very commendable, but also to 
I would say to set set the boundaries and find out what that person person if their affairs are together. Yes. And the reason why I say that, that could be, it becomes very, you could do all the caring and God forbid something happens to that person and you're right there. And all of a sudden the family comes in and it's like, well, what did, you know, there's a whole lot of questions. So I would just, I would say set kind of set, you know, have a conversation with the family and set the boundaries and make sure if this person's affairs are in order, because I just from experience, Something happens to someone, and if their affairs are not in order, you can't even process a whole lot of stuff because you worried mm -hmm. about the financial piece of certain right. things. Mm -hmm. oh, right. yes, Heather and I done lived that. Okay. <laughs> we done the, the affairs, <laughs> I can't look it. for enough for everybody. Yes. Um, little Tammy, I got you. you. Affairs need Black folks, let's get our affairs in writing. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tammy, I think you went off mute. Did you have something? Yeah. So um, congratulations on your um, new book. Um, you, as you know, and um, I guess a few of my actors know that I'm currently in my last year of seminary. Yay. Yay. Um, <laughs> so uh, last summer, I took a course on grief and loss. And entering that course, we always, um, a lot of uh, the attendees and students, we all think of grief as being someone transitioning. And as you mentioned about the stroke, that grief and loss is not all is about death and transition. It's about losing a way of life. So yeah. um, I am dealing with a cousin whose father um, was a pastor, father of six, um, very healthy, even though he was a widow. And when all that left, he felt um, a no reason to carry on and no reason to live because his normal had changed. So mm -hmm. I think that your book is not only um, a blessing for those who are dealing with death and transition, but any type of change that causes the normal to look different than before. And we have to keep in mind, as you mentioned with the stroke, um, people become angry because their normal has changed. Their independence has changed. Um, so it's also, um, your book can also benefit and bless those people who are still right here with us and their normal has changed because like for me when I broke my foot last year I, I can't run anymore so my ambition of running a half marathon or you know even doing Zumba that's changed mm, you know okay. my physical ability has changed my normal has changed and you have to adjust um, just like losing a job um, and losing a marriage um, you know it's so many different things we expect we experience loss and mm. our normals change so um, I just want to congratulate you on your book and um, just realize that and to share with the, all the listeners that this book can benefit so many people and not just those who are dealing with transition of, uh, of a loved one, but it can just be transition in life. Thank you, T-Wizzy. Um, thank you. That, and, you know, it's funny now, as you were talking, I'm thinking, <laughs> and Tammy, you one of the people who knows, just the things that like the last two years of our lives, the things that, that we've gone through and, and that are no longer in place. And yeah, the normals change and um, here we are and we still gotta live with a new, something new and create exactly. something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tarlene, can you post those images uh, that you had before the bundle and the new book? I don't have the bundle image. Well, wait a minute. Do I? I think you do. I had the. Let me see if I can get it for you. Um, I don't know if I. No, can I'm a. I'm a um, y'all. I'm a Zoom. Um, oh, I see. There you go. That's, that's of the the new book. The new book is actually um, available on Kindle, and you know the traditional paperback copy. So for those of you who are, are more ebook readers, I got you. I love that. <laughs> I got I you. I really do. Another thing with the book is you, um, I included um, space in the book after each passage, just like with the, with the first one, for you to journal out your thoughts 
um, if it's nothing else but to write a, 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 a paragraph or a couple of sentences, but to, to write out your thoughts, <clears throat> because as the normals change, has ch have changed in our lives, um, you know, we need to sometimes chart a new course uh, for our lives. And so it's important to start to, to jot some things down, even if it's just saying, some days I write in my journal, today was a crappy day or today was a good day, you know, just to, to, and thank you, Jesus, for the good day. But it may, you may need to just jot some things down um, there. I know, oh, we're over an hour, wow, okay. Um, some things that I'm working on beyond um, questions Leona asked about, like webinars and mm -hmm. things like that. I'm also working on some, some products for caregivers, so stay tuned for, for that. Uh, I've already got some artwork in place and working on some things. Just, you know, I want to bring a bit more um, awareness to the fact that many of us are caring for loved ones. And even those of us who have lost loved ones, um, that we, we still, we're, we exist and we're still around. So stay on, stay tuned for some of that as well. And this year, the caregiver symposium will be happening um, and that will be an online symposium uh, for it was never my desire to do that in person because I know that caregivers uh, have a lot more challenge um, with getting out so it will be a, mm -hmm. an online um, event for caregivers and uh, I want to put a plug in for one of my sister girls who is here on zoom um, with us but Elder Carol Williams is a good friend of mine, and she has a continual survivors grief conference um, that she is she has held I think two or three times, and um, I have attended uh, I want to say each one, and it has been a blessing, and I want to give Carol a moment to if she would like to to just say something about her conference because it is, it's, it gives tools. She's had people from, from capital care um, hospice talk. We had a Christian comedian last year. It's not, it's not a morbid cry buckets of tears kind of event, but it is really to help us to um, move forward in our lives. Uh, and I want to, yeah, she's um, allowed me to share, I want to say both years at her conference, but even still, I've come away with some things during the sessions that I wasn't, you know, the one talking. So, Carol, did you want to you wanna share anything? Well, good evening. Good evening to everyone. I actually was going to share something because I was laughing at you, Terrilene. Uh, most certainly, first, congratulations. Why are you laughing you? at me? Because you said um, my chatty friends are on here and they like to talk. And I know I'm one of your chatty friends. <laughs> so I was most certainly laughing at that. But thank you so much. I, before I say that, I do want to just make a comment because I've heard several comments concerning um, feeling guilty. One of the things that grief recovery method, um, we don't necessarily deal or talk about the word guilty or use the word guilty. Okay. When individuals um, mention guilt, we usually ask the question, um, did you do anything with the intent or plan to harm anyone? Mm -hmm. And usually when we ask that question, it usually helps individuals deal with the guilty part. So if you're feeling guilty, ask yourself, did you do anything with the intent or plan to actually harm someone? So I hope that helps. And also as we move to Mother's towards Mother's Day, it's okay to have a moment feel happy. Don't allow yourself to feel, I'm going to use the word guilty. Don't allow yourself to feel guilty because you're happy. And sometimes that can be a very challenge because we're so used to being in a place, some of us, in a place of being stuck or, you know, being sad or depressed. So then when we have moments of happiness, we are not able to accept or embrace happiness. So be okay with embracing your happiness. And if you feel like you don't want to go to the cemetery and everyone else is going to the cemetery, be okay with saying, no, I don't want to go because that may not be the best thing for me to do at that moment. Be okay to walk in whatever your truth is and whatever your process is and however you're feeling at that time. 
just want to share those. Thank you for that, Carol. And uh, before you talk about the, the conference, thank you for that, because that is something I wanted to touch upon, and I forgot almost. But, you know, as it relates to, I want to say that some of the practices that our community has been used to, you know, like the, the laying flowers um, uh, at a grave site, uh, every Memorial Day, every Mother's Day, that kind of thing. I, I personally don't subscribe to it. And there have been people who have um, commented to me about the fact that I hadn't. You know, not in a, and I, and I think it's just because it's like that practice, but you know how we have certain practices and we don't know where, where they came from and where they originated. And for me, I hadn't been to the cemetery. It was like a, over a year before I went to the cemetery to my mother's grave, honestly. And then when I did do it, I just happened to be up in the city in Hagerstown and I just, on a whim, I, I just, I just did it. But I knew there were other family members of mine who had been there before me, and that's perfectly fine. But I had not. I really had not. And um, so, yeah, those kinds of, you know, and I don't feel, and I'll say this, I don't feel bad about it either. I don't feel bad about it. I just, I didn't see the point. Um, I'm, and I, so for some people that helps them, for other people, it doesn't help them. But whatever your lot is, as, as Carol, you mentioned, don't uh, about guilty. You know, it if it harm if it if it leaves you coming away feeling worse, then my thought is don't don't go. Um, I went. I spent five minutes there, and I rolled out. <laughs> and, I, and I think I've been one one other time. You know, but <laughs> my thought, man, this is just y'all. Many of you know me and you know I'm that analytical thinker so in my head I'm like well she's not there so why am hey. I driving over there to sit hey. and, and talk to you know she I can do this in my house <laughs> like if I feel like I need to you know talk to mommy I can do that in my house exactly Connie they're not there so if you do go that's fine but if you don't it's fine. It's still fine. That's what I, I meant to say. Go ahead, Carol. Well, that, I most certainly, I have to say thank you because I appreciate your, your information on that because when my mom um, passed, I was frequently going to um, the cemetery and I remember you and Darlene. I remember <laughs> the tone of voice. I remember the tone of voice used. <laughs> How is that making you feel better? So I appreciate your sharpness with that because it really, it really dawned on me that you know it was it wasn't a good place for me to be, and um, it was able to help me understand that I I really need to do things better and be okay with that. But here's the thing too: it's funny because as we go through these new these normals, we can laugh about it now what we fought about before. <laughs> right, right. Because that was a interesting. That was a. Um, a uh, 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 a um how can I say it? That was a tense conversation. Yes. <laughs> yes. But we can laugh about it now. Yes. And and I appreciate all of my real friends and you know who we can have those conversations and know our each other's hearts and and we can have conversations with each other. And, you know, some of y'all have checked me and, you know, we still friends. I, we, that we don't have to cut each other off because we don't right. agree. Yeah. So I wanted to, uh, the grief conference, uh, it's going to be held. It's Continuous Survivors Grief Conference. Uh, it's going to be held October the 3rd. Um, we probably will do it virtually. I actually, I it's interesting. Clearly, it needs to be done because this is the third person that has said something about it, and I was so on edge about whether I'm having it or not having it. So, yes, I yes, do have can. everything. I have everything. The date is already set. So, it's going to be October the 3rd. So, we're still working on, most certainly going to start working now on plans to make this happen. Um, I just want individuals to come together to be educated about the grief process. And at the same time, we do. We have fun. Um, we usually have, we've had a comedian. We um, have very informative sessions because 
a lot of times individuals just aren't knowledgeable about a process called grief. And so that's all we want to do. So make sure you have more information. I'll make sure Tara has the information. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. My pleasure. Lee, am I missing anything? No, I believe we hit all of your points. Just want to remind folks they can purchase the book now. Yes. It is available on Tara's website and Walmart, right? Yeah, walmart.com. Walmart.com and amazon.com. So, of course, I'm sure she would appreciate uh, those purchases. They do make great gifts. And, you know, I was thinking, as uh, the brother Tony had mentioned, this is good for men, that it allows men um, to have a safe space to write um, when they don't necessarily want to talk the way we do. So, I can see getting these books from my brothers, both of my brothers. Oh, thank um, you. Oh, thank absolutely, you. absolutely. It, it, it's smart, it's practical, uh, it's spiritual, um, it's biblically based, uh, which speaks to your heart. So um, thank you again, uh, as I'm sure I see everyone's echo echoing that sentiment um, for writing these books and uh, making it possible for us to be able to find solace um, in our quiet time. And I do like, and I, I don't know how I didn't know about the audio book. <laughs> I, I love a, a good audio book um, because, you know, we have a tendency to multitask, but um, having that ear. Um, well, now this isn't aud on audio book yet. It's okay. um, just on Kindle, Kindle oh. Reader. Okay, well, that's next, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it, it, is, it is in the plan. Yes, it is in the plan. Okay, so having it on Audible um, allows me to take it with me. I love Audible, too. Yes, yeah. in my phone, so I appreciate that. Hello. Hi. Nicole? Is there one last question? Sorry. No. <laughs> I have one last question. I think I came in on a tail end. Terlene, how do you get um, autograph copy of the oh, books? Oh, through the website, uh, terlenecampbell.com. Okay, thank you. Sure. Did you see my message, Tara? Oh, yes. Okay, so yeah, we. Uh, my intent was an hour, hour and a half max, and I think we are definitely there. Uh, thank you, Beverly. We are going to, if all, as they say in the church, if all hearts and minds are clear, we are going to, uh, I'm going to end in a quick word of prayer. For my Facebook folks, I do apologize. I see that the live um, kicked out uh, about 15 minutes ago, but thankfully I'm recording the Zoom. So my plan is to get that uploaded onto YouTube, actually onto my, and by the way, I do have a YouTube channel, TaraLeanCampbell.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, as well. There are some, <laughs> some sermons on there, some real talk and other stuff. Uh, just a few things I'm building that uh, library. One of my friends told me that I popped up in her recommended things like one day last week and it was a snippet of something so in any event for those on facebook i'll i'll, I'll still be able to get that to you but yeah i just want to like pray and, and again thank you guys all for your support um very very much appreciated uh on my part and thank you everyone for the roles that you play in Lee's life yeah i appreciate it and with your help, we continue to push this out and bless people. That's my ultimate goal is that God get the glory for giving me, you know, now I not waste what he's deposited in me and that it's used to help somebody else. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just want to first say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. I never saw this day coming, but we're here. And I pray, kind Father, that I have done you justice and your purpose justice and maximizing this time and this space and this season that we're in. Lord God, I thank you for allowing and enabling me to capture and record this journey 
And I pray that you would continue to anoint and bless it and keep your hand upon this project. And God, I pray for everyone who has watched and participated today in this release, this launch. God, I praise you for every person who's watched, whether for a few minutes or the entire time. I thank you for their sacrifice of their time, something that they can never get back. I thank you for every person who's played a vital role in my life, and especially in the last uh, three years as I've taken this journey. I thank you for every deposit, every deposit of a word, every deposit of a word of challenge, a, a word of rebuke, a word of comfort, every card, every text message, everything. I thank you, God. I thank you for the sister girls who, who, who keep me, and brothers who keep me lifted, God. I thank you for those who've helped me celebrate milestones and just be there for the milestones that I didn't want to deal with. I thank you, God, for every person. And I pray that you would continue to breathe a fresh wind on them as well. And as we go throughout this time in our nation and in our community, I pray, kind Father, that you keep us all safe. I pray that you keep us all healthy. I pray, God, we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what next week brings. We don't know what's going to happen tonight. But Lord, with your hand in ours, we know that we will be all right. And so I pray that you give each of us who are dealing with our own new normals, whatever they may be, I pray that you give each of us the strength to endure because we know that your word says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. And that's what we want. We want to be saved. We want to be right. We want to meet you when it's the proper time and we want to be ready for that. This is our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Peace out. Thank you.